anyone who's watched my videos from back when I first made the switch to Sony, and they will all tell you the colours were, well, nothing short of horrendous. The default settings weren't great, so I made many attempts to try and correct it in post, which, if anything, made things worse. I then thought I'd fix the problem by using the Autumn Creative Styles and tweaking the white balance settings. I even made a video about it called Fixing Sony Colours. With hindsight though, it made things look better than default, but it still wasn't particularly great. However, for the past two years or so, I've actually been using a customised HLG picture profile for pretty much all of my videos, which looks like this straight out of camera. So, in this video, I will show you what settings that I have in place and how to dial them in yourself, and then afterwards, if you want to learn some more skills to make the most of these new colours, then why not check out Skillshare, who are sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with a vast array of classes across a multitude of topics, covering things like photography, video production, web design, art and writing, to name but a few. The classes on average run for between 30 to 60 minutes and each one is broken up into chapters that you can come back to as and when you please, which makes them easy to fit around even the busiest schedules. There are classes to suit complete beginners as well as those already experienced in the relevant topics. Basically, Skillshare has something for everyone. But if you don't believe me, why not check them out for yourself using the link in the description down below? And the first 1,000 people to do so will get themselves a one month free trial. Now, a few quick points that I want to make perfectly clear before we get into the settings. Firstly, I can't take all the credit for these settings. They're actually adapted from a profile setup that I'd seen someone else post on a public forum. I did tweak a few of the settings to get the results better suited to what I want, but the foundation of the setup was actually created by someone else. Lastly, several people have asked in my previous picture profile video as to whether these picture profiles can be used for stills or not. Now, if you're shooting JPEG, yes, because the picture profile data will be baked into the file. If you're shooting RAW though, while the previews in the camera will display the picture profile effects, I've always found that when you load the raw files into a raw editor, it defaults back to the standard settings. Such as when you shoot a monochrome in raw, it displays in black and white on the camera, but the moment you put it in a raw editor, it shows back up in color. Right, let's get onto the settings, shall we? So, Step one will be to get onto your picture profile settings. On the A7 III, this can be found on the tab one, page 12. Click on the option and it will give you a list of picture profile numbers ranging from zero, no picture profile, through to 10. Now, these are just placeholders rather than specific picture profiles. I have seen many people asking which picture profile number the people shoot with, but unless they're asking someone who's still got a default setup, then that question is kind of moot. So, select whichever number slot you want the picture profile to be stored in. For me, I've got them in PP3. No idea why I chose 3, but whatever. Select whichever number you want and then press across to the right. Now, these are the settings that I have dialed in. Now, firstly, the black level I have at minus 15. You can take it all the way up to plus 15 though if you want a flatter picture profile. Then gamma I have at HLG3. Black gamma is set to middle. The knee is set to manual mode and then under manual set I have the point at 105% and the slope at zero. Then color mode I have at 709. Saturation is up at plus six. Color phase is at zero. Then for color depth, I have the reds at plus two, greens at plus one, blues at plus two, cyans at zero, magenta at minus two, and yellows at plus three. And then the detail level I have left at zero. Now, I'll be honest, I don't really know what half of those settings actually mean. I just set in the original suggested settings and then started having a bit of a play around to see what changes look best. And in reality, you may find yourself having to do the same thing. But hopefully, if you're after better color straight out of camera for either video or JPEGs, then this should be 
a pretty solid start for you to work with. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. As always, if you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. While you're down there, if you found this video helpful and you want to help support this channel, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already done so. And then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.